Brandon Miller wins Eastern Conference Rookie of the Month again, plus there's a lot of injuries. How do all of those injuries affect Steve Clifford coming back next season? We'll get to all of that today on Locked On Hornets. You are Locked On Hornets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. In a minute, cause we live. We live. We live. <laughs> It's Locked On Hornets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day. Thanks for making us your first listen. We're free and available anywhere you get your podcast, and that includes YouTube. There's Doug Branson jam- jamming out. You can find him on the Substack, everyhornetsboxscore.com. I'm Walker Mail. Listen to me on WFNZ every weekday from 12 to 3 p.m. Uh, yeah, I'm playing a road game once more. I'm back at the studio, and it <laughs> looks like I'm at jail. I got arrested. And here's, here's a side profile like this here you go all right jail to the other side yeah i don't your your whole situation camera wise i think we could add that to the long list of injuries this season to the charlotte hornets and the charlotte hornets universe you've had a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes hopefully next season we can get it back on track because right now yes you do look uh like they're giving you 15 minutes this is your i you know Walker, I will say I'm honored that you're using your one phone call uh, to chat with me about Steve Clifford and his job security. I messed up, man. Odd choice. I want to say odd choice. You could have called uh, your significant other. You could have called your parents, but you decided, nope, I'm going to jam out with Doug. I appreciate it. Doug, I messed up, man. I did something <laughs> bad. I don't know where to turn to, and you're the first name I thought of. Here I am. Just please, any way you can help, it would be greatly appreciated. That is, that is a funny idea that you would seriously call me from jail, and I'd be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But listen, this whole Clifford thing, I've been thinking yeah. about it uh, pretty intensely, and I'm not sure that his job is as safe as we think it is. Uh, no, that's fine, Walker, but I need to know who the top 10 chubby Hornets players are. <laughs> Stop talking. Give me the fat guys. I want to celebrate their fatness. Let's move on. We'll get to Brandon Miller winning the Eastern Conference Rookie of the Month again in the next segment. At some point, you just repeat the same stuff. But we got some stuff. We got some new stuff for you. So stick around in the second segment. You were kicking around the idea to me yesterday how the injuries, this was before we got the injury report, by the way, which everybody's questionable. Everybody's hurt. Everybody's Everybody's on the list. But before the injury report, you said tomorrow I'm going to discuss Steve Clifford and how the the injuries might affect him and his ability to come back next season, but in a different way than you might think. Explain yourself. Because I think that when you look at how many injuries they've sustained, we, we did this whole rodeo last offseason. We looked at Clifford's job performance and said, wow, look at all of these injuries. Got to, Before you can fairly evaluate him, And this team, you've got to see what it looks like healthy because, look, they played stronger at the end of last season, and so there there was some hope there, right? They come into this season, they started out healthy, and then everything, you know, went went awry very quickly. And so I think it would be easy to say, well, look, last, you know, let's let's give him one more year. Let's look at that and see if what what can he do with a healthy team? Because in those small windows where the Hornets have been healthy, they've looked like a really good team. They've looked good both offensively and I think he's made some strides defensively and and helping this team become something different than they were when they got kicked in the teeth in those last two play-in experiences. But I think the injuries might actually hurt his ability to stay as head coach of the Charlotte Hornets, and I'll tell you why. New, New GM, Jeff Peterson, does have a little bit of a relationship with Steve Clifford, but he's the new guy. And the new guy, I think there's going to naturally be an inclination for the new guy to go out and find his coach. And the question is, does he do it this offseason or does he do it at some point down the line? And I think the the argument to do it this offseason is that you're going to be starting from ground zero anyway. Right, Walker? Look, if they had gotten LaMelo Ball and Mark Williams back at the trade deadline and you had gotten to see them fight for a play-in spot, even if they would not have made that miracle run to get the play-in spot, even if they had fallen just short, if they had improved with all of their pieces, then I think there was a strong argument, a very strong argument to say, got to continue to see this out with Steve Clifford. But you didn't get that, and you're going to have to usher all of these pieces back in the offseason anyway. If you're Jeff Peterson, I'm not really advocating for this, but if you're Jeff Peterson and there's a name that you like, maybe from the Hawks, uh, former Hawks coach Mike Budenholzer, or yeah. some other coach that you like. I, I just there's there's not there's not really an excuse not to go after that guy and start the process now rather than waiting a season to see if it turns out well with Clifford. 
No, that's the thing for sure. If you want somebody else, Mike Budenholzer has a track record. He has the success that is hard to argue with. Even if if you're Milwaukee and it just ran its course, then fine. But there are plenty of people that would tell you that was a mistake, getting rid of Mike Budenholzer if you fire Griffin immediately. And now you're rolling with Doc Rivers. I think they just lost to the Wizards last night. It's not going great up there with Doc Rivers in Milwaukee. So you're right. If you want to go get Budenholzer, who is a monster floor raiser and – We've seen with the star can do a nice job of the postseason. We've seen with the Hawks. He can even put together a nice game plan if you have the inferior team. We've seen that even before. Yeah, Budenholzer would be great. But if it's not Budenholzer, like, are you going to give Clifford the benefit of the doubt over one of these young assistants? And that's what's going to be interesting to me. Because if if Budenholzer's on the table, that makes all the sense in the world. But if you're going for a young assistant, isn't proven does Jeff Peterson want to roll with that kind of guy over Steve Clifford or does he want to roll with Clifford who has not had a real healthy roster and just going back over what Clifford has done with healthy guys here Doug if you go back to the beginning of the season and you go to the 20 game sample they were 7 and 13 in those first 20 games on pace for about 30 wins something like that that's with Terry Rozier that's with Gordon Hayward That's mostly with LaMelo Ball at that time. But remember, not a fully healthy LaMelo. It took him a while to kick into gear. Mm -hmm. He got going, and then he got hurt. And you had 10 games games there without Miles, too. Yeah, uh, that's true. Yeah, that's a good point. So it it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Even the most successful part of the season, you're going to be missing multiple guys. Here's something I do find interesting. You go back 7-13 and in those first 20 games, Doug. That's probably the best. That's the best ratio of a sample size to best success that the Hornets have had. Seven and thirteen. You know what happened in that twentieth game and that win against Toronto? That was Mark Williams' last game that he played, that's and crazy. then Mark Williams goes out with an injury, and then they lose a bajillion straight. So, I you wonder with Mark Williams being such a defensive-minded guy, protecting the rim, and he's got his faults. I, even me, so I, it's been a roller coaster, right? I, I like Mark Williams a lot. We can clearly see that physicality is not his strong suit. Sometimes it really hurts this team. The dude matters a lot still because of his size, because of his IQ, because of his ability to finish as a lob threat. He was a finesse finisher. He w- he had the you know funny streak of finishing a million shots in a row. I, I, I wonder, too, just how much Mark getting back into the equation matters just as much as a miles or a lamello and we don't talk about mark as much as we have with those other guys understandably but man if you look at when they started losing that was when mark was just one too many and they haven't been able to get back on track hiring a new head coach is going especially when you have a few talented pieces that you really want to continue to develop and see flourish within your organization is a risk a big risk it would be no risk if you really were resetting the entire roster and were going back down to really sort of rock bottom zero. Yeah. It would really be no risk. But there is a risk, and it's a, it's a risk when you, you have a guy already in-house in Clifford that has a good relationship with Brandon Miller, that has a good relationship with LaMelo Ball. You, you're resetting all of those relationships and hoping that you don't hire the wrong guy that comes in and, and those guys don't like that guy anymore. It would be an even bigger, bigger, bigger risk if the previous coach – had some cachet in terms of hey we we as a fully healthy unit we played a lot better under this guy and we almost achieved the things that we wanted to achieve that would be an even bigger risk what i'm saying is that that piece is not there because those guys didn't get back and i think that's going to hurt the argument for clifford to stay when push comes to shove because i think clifford's a good coach I think he would be a good coach next season for this roster if it were to stay healthy. I think if he gets fired, it would be super unfair. But that's professional sports. Professional sports is highly unfair. It's all about results. And it's all about when when a new front office comes in, it's all about timing. When do we make the changes? And I think if you're looking at timing and you're looking at this roster and you're saying, hey, we're going to have to just rethink everything anyway, we might not even have Miles Bridges next season. You know, why not make those changes now? I'm not sure that there's a good argument not to do it. Right. Uh, Yeah, that started as a Steve Clifford segment. And then upon further research, it turned a little bit into a Mark Williams segment. So I appreciate you bringing us back on track and going back to Clifford because that was interesting to me. But you're right. No, No, you're right. I was just making the joke that you brought it back because it was Clifford. But it's just, man, Miles, Mello, Mark. 
you're right that we did it again last year. We, we've done this already. That's what's so maddening about it. It's uh, that's happened two years in a row when we didn't think it would get near that bad again. Like there's no way you could copy and paste it. But sure enough, that's what the injury gods decided to do. Well, yeah, and, we, and we've talked about it with, with Mark. Even if you get Mark back, you've still got some issues there in both your uh, in both your front court depth, but also your back court, you know, point guard depth that they're going to have to address if they're serious about making the playoffs. And so, again, if you've got to make the, so many changes to, to get this roster really right, then then I think you've got an excuse there if you're the front office to go ahead and make the change mm-hmm. at coach and 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 hopefully you know it would be an somewhat amicable one to say yeah. hey we tried this didn't work out nothing really nothing to do with Clifford or his ability to coach but we've got but we're we're making changes and we're going to make them now I'm just telling you that's the feeling that I get and that if that happened it would not shock me at all at this point had, no, but it, had they had they gone on a run had lamelo come back and was happy and playing well had mark come back and made the defensive impact and and not you know look like he had lost a major portion of the season if all of that would have fallen into place then i would come on here and say i would be shocked if they got rid of clifford sure. um but but i wouldn't at this point all right let's move on hopefully this guy doesn't get injured coming up next on the lockdown hornets podcast Don't go to sleep on the Hornets just yet. Brandon Miller wins another Eastern Conference Rookie of the Month award. We'll dive into that coming up next on Locked on Hornets. This episode is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or you get your money back because with ebay motors your burden rubber not cash with all the parts you need at the prices you want it's easy to make the car the mvp and bring home huge wins keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com eligible items only exclusions apply ebay guaranteed fit only available to u.s customers more locked on hornets ahead Doug, it happened again. Brandon Miller wins his third straight Eastern Conference Rookie of the Month award. If you look at his stats in the month of March, the percentage was down, but he salvaged a little of that at the end of the month. He averaged 18.6 points per game on 43% shooting rounded up, 36% shooting from distance on eight threes per game, shot 71% from the free throw line. That's down from what it usually is. Also had 5.3 rebounds, 2.6 assists. He did so while also only turning it over at 1.6 times per game. What do you make of Brandon Miller and the way that he was almost, I don't know if there's any competition outside of Vasa Micic who fell off. He was a legitimate candidate, and it was funny because it felt jokey. It felt like one of the things we do when we're joking about putting together a group to try to get Micic the Eastern Conference Rookie of the Month award, but that was a real thing. He was actually at the top of the pace, in my opinion, and then not anywhere close as Brandon Miller ascended and Micic started to fall off. It just doesn't feel like, one, there's that much competition. Two, it's clear in a way Brandon should win this. And three, man, when you win three straight Eastern Conference Rookie of the Month awards on like what are numbers that dictate you should win that like even in normal months even if the competition was pretty good that stat line still might get you it yeah man Brandon Miller's had an excellent rookie season in his last full month of NBA basketball that's right and he's done it against good teams he's done it against good defenses he's done it against defenses that have been uh, at least at the beginning of the month were really keying on him Uh, but look if we're being honest, there's not a lot of competition in the Eastern Conference. Jaime Jaquez has fallen off. I don't know if that has to do with like Terry Rozier joining the team or what, but his offense has really gone away. Um, Asur Thompson, who was his other big competition, that guy's been hurt, didn't play much in March. So it is more this, defensive anyway. Like I, I don't see Thompson taking that award from him. Even, true, even but early healthy. in the season, early in the season, he had a ton of block shots and a ton of rebounds for a guard or for a, like a sort of a guard forward combo. So well, and that's true too. But all like this speaks to it's funny because these are the only three Eastern Conference Rookie of the Month awards that Brandon Miller won. Right, like it's only three, but they're three straight. 
And that does speak to Brandon's role where at the beginning of the season, there wasn't a lot of responsibility for him. But then once he had the basketball in his hands a lot more, being because LaMelo was out, then you trade Terry. Now you have all these new guys where the other perimeter players that you have coming in are unproven Trey man that is looking for an opportunity. 30-year-old rookie, Micic. Yeah, Brandon, the ball's yours. You know, go fill it up. And that's exactly what he's done as he's gotten this new responsibility. Yeah, and I think it's not a coincidence that Vasa falling off scoring wise, you know, comes at the same time that Brandon, uh, his scoring started to tick up. He started to find his three point shot towards the end of March. Vasa started moving the ball a little bit more. St- stopped looking for his his offense so much. I think Miles Bridges playing better actually has a lot to do with this too, because defenses couldn't solely key in on Brandon Miller and try to take him away. They had to worry about Miles Bridges even more so because Miles. I think Miles certainly playing a little bit better than uh, all around game than than Brandon Miller is right now, and so yeah, Brandon had a little bit more freedom towards the middle to uh, back end of this month to uh, to shoot, get open shots, and knock them down, and he did, and that's why he's Eastern Conference Rookie of the Month. He's Eastern Conference Player of the Year. Or I don't know that doesn't exist, but he is, uh, and that has to be exciting if you're a Hornets fan. You look, they they did it. They they you know they knocked this one out of the park. Number two overall pick. Um, he's been he's been amazing this season. Yeah, yeah. By the way, ha- Jaime Jaquez won the first two. Uh, Jaime Jaquez won the month of November. Also won December. And then it's funny. Terry Rozier goes from one team to another, and then he takes your Rookie of the Month awards away because then that's when Brandon Miller would win. Thank you, Terry. The next three. Thank you, Terry. We appreciate okay. that award once Final more. Gift. Um, I, I do wonder, we, there's a Brandon Miller all-star conversation to be had. We got a lot of episodes before we start only going like two or three days a week. And so maybe we'll save that evergreen topic a little bit later. But there's a possibility. I, it's 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 there for him, mostly because of his ability to step up. I We go through the competition, and, and even if the rookies, it's not that tough to win. I I don't want to look. I don't want to focus on that too much because this stat line, if you apply it to last year or two years ago, 18 points per game on 36 percent from distance and 43. That's that's like your worst month efficiency wise, and that's even still good enough to win a normal competition based Eastern Conference Rookie of the Month. And and that's why I think it is you know pertinent to have an All Star selection conversation next year. Well, I think he's he's setting the table. Okay, he's caught the attention of star like LeBron, you know, talks about him being a really good player. Like there are there are stars around the league that he's catching some attention. Okay, two things would have to happen for him to he would sneak into the all star discussion because I don't think he's going to get voted in next season. So it would be a coach's selection or an injury replacement, very similar to what happened to LaMelo Ball. So how does he do it? Well, the Hornets would have to win basketball games like this would have to be a winning team or a team that is super competitive, maybe they're one or two games below 500. But it has to be a winning team going into into that selection. Brandon Miller would have to evolve his game well beyond what it is now, which is really just knocking down three-point shots and mid-range shots and scoring. Like, he's going to have to increase rebounds. He's going to have to, like Miles Bridges says, he's going to have to improve his playmaking significantly. Like, he would have to showcase the all-around game that uh, he will eventually evolve into. How quickly can he get there? That's going to be the answer to that question. Will be can he sneak into the All Star? The, the, also, the answer to the question: Can he sneak into the All Star game next season? Uh, that's that's what you have to look for. I have a few more thoughts on that. Plus, we have lots of injuries to get to. So let's get a head start. Coming up next on the Locked On Hornets podcast. Don't go to sleep on the Hornets just yet. Everybody's on the injury report for tonight's game against Portland. We'll discuss what that means. A little smell, a little tanky in here. Is that what's happening? We'll talk about it coming up next. Locked on Hornets. This episode is brought to you by Amazon Fire TV. Fire TV is your destination for sports from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis. And Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs as well as the Fire TV stick that you can plug into your existing television. That provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball or the college basketball tournament, Final Four people, you're going to want to have a Fire TV. Fire TV recently created fire tv channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands all for free 
That includes all of us at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV channels let you dive into all of the game analysis, highlights, and more to keep up to date on all the latest in the world of sports, March Madness, NBA, MLB, lots more than that. Not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, cooking videos as well. There's so much. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. Trust me on this. To learn more, visit www.amazon.com slash Locked On Fire TV. One more segment to go on Locked On Hornets. Last thing on the brand, and I, I said we're going to have that conversation later, but we'll just have it again later. How about that? That's what the we do thing- on here. We have conversations, and then we wait a while, and we have the conversation again until the conversation becomes moot. Thus is the daily podcast, folks, yes. on one very niche topic in a macro world. Brandon Miller getting an all-star selection. More so, I think the, the point you made – that you're right about is is also the the team success like you have to see improvement it, you don't have to be a playoff team in my opinion like but but you do have to see improvement i i'm going to based off the trends of the guys that win a lot of the rookie of the month awards who are in contention for rookie of the year and you see those guys get to that all-star game in their second year like that that's when you can almost do this with quarterbacks in the nfl I feel like you can do this with star players in the NBA. It, okay, we see their first year, very successful. Brandon Miller checks off that box. Now when you go to next season, the LaMelo coming back factor is interesting just because I don't know how they're going to share the basketball, and maybe that's the part where we dive into the nuance of what goes on later. But you see so many of these guys. Paolo Boncaro comes to mind. You know, Good team. They got better this year. Rookie of the year last year all-star this season Lamelo ball comes to mind and they got better that year Lamelo second season in the NBA, in the NBA stays healthy and actually gets an all-star bid and I'm not one of the the whole like oh they only got in as a reserve get out of here they're an all-star that's how it works so those are some of the things I'm looking at with him next season I don't know if I'd bet on it but it, it's worth the combo in my opinion I would not bet on it but and that has nothing to do with Brandon either. Miller it's because Brand because you have just such a compressed window of time you don't have the entire season. You have a compressed window of time to make your case. And a lot of it has to do with what happened, you know, in in this season. And so that's why I say he set the table because he's gotten a little bit of attention, but not of a lot not a lot of attention because the Hornets haven't been very good. They have to get off to a hot start because then people start reporting on what's going on with the Hornets. And they start to dig and they go, Oh, what's going on with the Hornets is that Brandon Miller's game has gone from A to B. And that's a big jump. And they start, then they start whispering about All Star. This is how it happens. And then somebody gets hurt, and then coaches have to go and make a decision, or Adam Silver has to go and make a decision. And Brandon Miller has been reported on a lot, and so it, it makes a lot of sense. But if the Hornets aren't very good, none of that happens, and he stays buried. I will say too that Paul George, his personal goat, didn't make the All Star game until his third season. So Brandon not making an all-star game next season is not going to be an indictment on him. No. It'll be more an indictment on the team. I think Brandon's got plenty of time to reel off all-star selection after all-star selection. Um, but he does, you know, he does have to evolve his game as well. I don't know if we're going to see Brandon tonight. I don't know if we'll see him in the all-star game next year and don't know if we'll see him tonight, which is unfortunate because the guy that they chose over a certain prospect and Brandon Miller, they chose him over Scoot Who? Henderson. Oh, yep. Yes. Scoot, yeah. Scoot, that one guy I that we were that all in favor of. Yeah. Choosing at number two and then Brandon wins a multiple rookie of the month awards and Scoot doesn't have any. Um, but I don't know. And I don't know if we're going to get to see those guys go at it. Here's the injury report for uh, Charlotte Hornets PR tweeting this out yesterday. Miles Brandon. Bridges, right wrist contusion. Brandon mm-hmm. Miller, right wrist sprain. Mm-hmm. Grant Williams, wow. right ankle sprain. They're all questionable. Vasa Micic has a right shoulder strain. Mm. Not a sprain. Mm. Going back to sprain-strain mm-hmm. combo. That's mm. something we've had here. Vasa Micic is doubtful. And then, of course, Lamelo, Seth, Cody, Mark, they're all out. So, What's happening here, Doug? Just I, you know, don't know if we saw this coming. Is this just Tank City against the Portland team? Might as well get some rest. What are you thinking? Look, at the end of the season, everybody's banged up a little bit. And so I guess you could just do this. You could just go and say, hey, what's hurting today? All right, we're going to declare you. That's what we're going to do for the injury report here. You can just do that. You don't need a, a legitimate excuse to, to keep someone out. You just find something that hurts. So that's what's going on here is they're, they're playing a team in Portland that has nothing to play for 
and you're not really going to get a great evaluation of this team versus a team that's not very good. If Now, it'll be interesting to see what happens in the latter part of the week when they play uh, – well, I know they on Sunday they play Oklahoma City. So they, they've got some good competition coming up. I think you're going to see this the rest of the way. If it's a team that they that is not competing for anything – and they they know they're not going to get a good evaluation of the players, then they're just going to hold some guys out. I don't know if they hold all of these guys out. <laughs> I don't know if you you could even field the roster. You're going to have to uh, bring some more G League call ups. Maybe we see Leaky Black again. <laughs> Certainly, you're going to see Thor McGowan's and and some of these other cats from the G League. Uh, Marquise Bolden will get some more time. So I think that's what this is all about. And I'm glad I, if Brandon doesn't play, I'll be glad because that this is not how I want the Brandon versus Scoot first matchup. I want it to be where you know maybe at the beginning of the season when both teams have a little bit to play for there's a different competitive level to games in those situations so you know and I'm not saying this because I'm trying to avoid the one-on-one matchup and all of the commentary that will come from that I do want to see that matchup in its truest purest form and, and that's not what we would get tonight yeah but so I actually go the opposite way like man, this is a game between the Hornets who aren't anywhere close to play in and same thing with Portland. I really want to see, like, if, if we're trying to watch a product that is going to be entertaining as much as possible, how do you draw as many eyeballs as possible here? Like, play the freaking rookies that we all debated about. <laughs> like, this is, this is what we all discussed when, oh, what are the games to circle? We circled the Portland games. Things have changed, no doubt about it. But it feels lame to have Brandon Miller sit out for some right wrist contusion sprain whatever strain that we didn't even know was happening because Portland is terrible in part because Scoot has not been good this year but this is what we talked about all offseason this is what we talked about at the beginning of the year and maybe this could even be a vic this could be a victory lap for Brandon Miller too like over me over you over all the Scoot fans in the world because there were a lot of them this is what we want and so this is what, if he was legitimately injured, I clearly would not say go out there just so you can battle Scoot. I think he was actually legitimately injured the first time. These, or maybe Scoot wasn't on the floor. I think that's what it was. But now we got like a strain of some sort, man. Like this is what we want. If we want the NBA to be as popular as possible, if we want to see the young stars go at it and then build a chapter one going into, hey, they're, they're going to play again. Play, play Brandon if he's able. Play him. Yeah, again, I would be so on board with that idea. You know, I love to rant about the NBA and getting in the way of its own popularity and tripping over its own you-know-what. But, I, but, again, if this were game 10, if this were game 20, 30, 40, yes, but we're just too we're too deep. Nobody's watching. Nobody's going to pull up for this game because it's Scoot. A few people would, but not enough to be significant enough. To risk injury to Brandon Miller in a game where you're not – if this were a game, again, I, I understand there's no playoff impl- implications or playing implications, but even if you could have Brandon Miller go up against a, a, a Tatum-level player or somebody where you could then fairly evaluate and look at some tape, this is not what's going to happen in this game. Also, I'll tell you, I've got selfish mo- motivations because I will be coming uh, to town for the game on Sunday <laughs> against the Ho- Oklahoma City Thunder, and so I want everyone as healthy as possible. Now, if they hold Brandon out of that game, you will hear me that following Monday with a big old rant because I'm coming to town. Get the get the word out to Peterson. Get the word out to Clifford. Get the word out to the training <laughs> staff. I want everybody healthy because I'm going to have my eyeballs on this team. Scoot may not move the needle, but Doug Branson does. Doug's coming to town. That's when you play Brandon Miller. I got to come to town and see the team that I'm most jealous of. I've said this on air. I've said this on Twitter. I am most jealous of Oklahoma City Thunder. I want to be them. We all are. I want to. Yeah, it's so it's so wonderful. So I I I can't wait to see both of those both of those teams. You're you're jealous of the team that is at the top of the conference with a million draft picks and an MVP candidate. Me too. Yeah, I mean, I small market. Yeah, I'm jealous of that team. The way they're able to build for sure. SGA, absolutely, totally on board. (laughs) Who drafted that guy, by the way? Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, we did. Yeah. I'll tell you what. I think this front office is jealous of Oklahoma City too because they are stockpiling draft picks. Yes, they are. uh, Like they they are the Thunder right now. So, um, you know. Better days ahead, folks. That's all we can say here on this show. Everybody's injured right now, but it won't stay that way forever. That's our motto. Yep, tune in five years from now. That'll be our same motto. That'll do it for Locked On Hornets. Thanks for making us your first listen. We're free and available anywhere you get your pods. That includes YouTube, subscribe, hit the notification button, all that stuff. Also, go check out 
Doug on his sub stack, every Hornets box score.com, and then tune in to the Wesson Walker show 12 to three every weekday on 92, seven FM. Have a great rest of your day. We'll be back with you tomorrow to recap the non Brandon scoop matchup. Bye. Bye.